In this video, I'm gonna give you all of my secrets, at least my secrets when it comes to resin 3D printing, and at least when it comes to making sure your printer runs beautifully for a very long time. Now I'm gonna use this Anycubic M5S as the stand-in for one of the props today, and we're gonna pretend like I just opened this printer, it's brand new. There's a few things you need to do right at the beginning. And the very first thing that I always do to all of my printers is I take these screws right here and I take a little bit of grease and I'm using the Super Lube uh, multi-purpose silicon grease and I apply a little bit to the threads. By doing this, you're gonna make sure the threads don't lock up on you. I've seen a lot of people complain about their threads uh, sticking over time, resin gets down inside of them. So I just wanna make sure that these are filled all the way up with grease all the way at the top. And that way it's also gonna act like a little bit of a barrier to the resin. They're going to go in there easier and then they're not gonna lock up or seize up. There's more to this little secret than that about not getting your threads stuck um, other than just greasing them up. But greasing them up is, a, is the first step that I do on all my resin 3D printers. The very next step that I do is I cover the hood in plastic. Now I used to use this plastic right here. I just bought a big roll of it from Amazon, but I've upgraded since then and using this plastic. This worked pretty well, it was pretty easy to, to apply, but on the inside, I noticed over time it would fall off. So instead I moved over to this stuff. Now this stuff is like used for construction sites on putting on windows, it's pretty much it, it actually has UV protection built into it, so it's going to increase the UV protection on the hood, and it sticks. So it's got a stickiness to it. The stickiness won't leave any residue on the hood, but it is going to make sure it doesn't fall off on the inside or outside. It's a little hard to apply, but once you get it on, it's going to offer a lot of protection on your hood. It's going to keep that static issue where the resin likes to stick to it away. So it's going to make it really easy to clean. If you don't know this, resin has some chemicals in it that basically it etches and adheres and starts to eat at the plastic of the hood. So even if it's on there just for a second, you try washing it off, it's, it never really comes off. It's a big pain. This prevents all of that. So step two, cover your hood with some plastic, preferably protective, protective window covering for construction sites. Now step three can either be for a brand new printer or one you've had for a long time sitting around. This has actually been in storage for a while, so it's rather dusty. And now what I don't want to have happen is I don't want there to be a bunch of hair or dust or stuff like this on the bottom of the release film or on the LCD. Now I've tried a few things like this little thing right here that I use for my cameras that's got a built-in filter. I've tried blowing it off and that works okay, but it's really not a great idea. Instead, I'm gonna use these right here. Now these are used for dentist offices and they've got a little bit of sticky to them as well. You can just take these, put them down on your LCD, and pull it up like that. That is going to pick up any dust, hair, anything like that one. I do this anytime I remove my vat. I do it to the LCD, and I do it to the bottom of the vat. I do this just to make sure that, again, there's no hair or dust or anything like that. Also, if you're gonna like replace a screen protector or anything like that, it works really well as, as well, just to make sure the surface is completely clean before you go over and install your vat, which goes this way. The next thing that I like to do on all my printers is I take these fish tank thermometer sticky things and I stick them right on the vat. I usually put it um, a little bit higher and there's a reason why I don't go really low. And that's for the next step, tape. What I do is I'll take tape and I'll take it about this right here, rip it, and then just stick it right on the front here. And all I'm doing right here is I'm creating a seal between the vat and the build plate up here. So if I got the build plate here and I, and I remove it, Sometimes when you remove it, it just drips a little bit on the front. Putting a little tape right here will make it so if that resin drips down, it doesn't get underneath the vat and on the LCD. It only takes one drip to get sucked in there to pretty much ruin you know, your screen protector, ruin the vat. In some cases, it can just ruin the whole printer if, it gets, if everything gets really gnarly. So a single piece of tape right here does everything you need to do to protect it from drips all the way across the front. Very simple, works great. The tape solution even works for the printers with a tilting vat like the Mars 5 Ultra or the Saturn 4 Ultra or 4 Ultra, you know, the 16K that came out to have the vat that does this. Now what I do on this one is I use a thick piece of tape and a thin piece of tape and I create something that looks like this. What this is, it's basically, basically an accordion and how it works is it's sticky on the, uh, this whole front part's not sticky. On the back, you've got sticky only on the sides and not in the center, so this won't stick, see, nothing. And then it's just basically just gonna do that. So as this thing goes up and down, not that fast. This little accordion thing right here is gonna be stuck to the front, like this. See that? Check that out. No gap anymore, any drips are gonna be caught and I don't need to use that plastic thing anymore. Just a little bit of tape. So it works on all the printers and it's just fantastic. Definitely a must do. There we go. Now, as I put the sticker here, you might be able to see why I didn't put the sticker down low. 
I want there to be enough room for the tape to go on with the sticker on top. These stickers on the bat are actually pretty accurate. Resin is really, really good at moving heat around. Of course, the bat is all aluminum. It's also really good at moving heat around. It's gonna give you a really accurate reading about what the actual temperature is of the resin. And most 3D printers don't have any temperature readings on the bat itself. Even the new um, Saturn IV Ultra 16K doesn't have temperature readings in the vat. It's somewhere else. You know this, but if you look at the bat and you turn it around, there's only two pins on it, one for ground, one for power. There's no other pins on there for any sort of temperature monitoring or anything like that. So even on that printer with, um, with it, you're still probably gonna wanna put one of these on if you care to check out what the temperatures of the resin and the vat really are. Now the next thing is to protect your build plate so it doesn't get all scratched up like this one does. There's a couple ways to do this, but my preferred method is to not use the plastic scrapers or the metal scrapers that come with it. These ones I found as you're, you know, you're doing this, it's, it's gouging it. Sometimes the corners get dinged or bent and sometimes it slips and you cut yourself. These ones I don't like. I'm gonna use this little guy right here. I'm gonna put links in the description for everything here. This one won't scratch, so your build plate doesn't end up looking like this. Small scratches are okay, but I've, you know, if you get deeper gouges and stuff like that, especially if you start to get the aluminum to peel up and make a sharp edge, that can damage the release film. So we wanna try to keep this clean. Of course, if you get too many scratches, you can always sand it down, but that sucks. So just use this and don't worry about all that crap. So for this next one, I put resin in the vat. I'm just using the Shriatec white. Make sure you just shake these things up like the Oja Money for about a minute before you pour it in there. That's gonna make sure your prints just turn out better. So this next bit has to do with after you've ran a print and what you do next. This is something you really, really wanna do, something I do religiously uh, after every print. You wanna take a soft silicone spatula and squeegee the fat. Now I've tried all sorts of soft silicone spatulas. Um, and to be honest, the one that I like the most is this one right here. It's called Newish Tool. I just bought it off Amazon. You could probably buy it off of you know, AliExpress or whatever. This is my favorite of all of them for sure. And so what you do is after you run a print, you're just gonna take it and you're going to squeegee the fat. Now what you're doing here is you're mixing up the resin to make sure that the pigmentation that falls out gets pulled off of the release film and back into the resin. This is gonna make sure on the next print, layer one that bonds to the build plate bonds really well. Also, it's gonna fill for anything hard. And this is really important to make sure that your printer stays running long and well for a very long time. Because if you fill anything hard, well, you gotta get it out of there. And there's a few methods to get out of there, but there's one that I like more than anything. And it's using my favorite thing, post-it notes. So let's say I found something gross inside the bat here. I was, you know, squeegeeing it and I felt something hard and I wanted to run a bat clean to get it out. I take a post-it note and for me, I just fold it um, kind of like a paper airplane a little bit. I mostly do this so that um, the cut edges are not exposed. I don't know if I can trust to not put paper fibers in there. I also don't want anything sharp against the bat. So this is all folded edges and nice and nice and soft. So from here, I'm gonna go through and push this here in the corner and just kind of push it down. And I wanna make sure that the tip of it goes, you know, towards the center because the LCD is smaller than the vat. So if you put it too far into the corner, it's gonna miss. But if you miss, you can actually run it again. So if you miss and you pull this thing out and nothing comes out, actually I'll just show you if I don't flick resin everywhere. All right, so I'm actually gonna pretend like I failed on this one. I'm just gonna put it here in the very, very corner, not enough to actually make contact. Let's run the vat clean. After 10 seconds, normally what should happen is when I pull this out, it should come with it should come with the film. Let's see if it does. Oh, I actually did on this one. Oh, nope, it broke. So what's nice is you can do it again. I can come over here, let's do it from the opposite corner. I'm gonna run the vat clean again. So now that's done, let's peel this up. And it's gonna come up with that very thick now uh, vat clean there. And so there you have it. Even if it fails the, the first time, you can just run it again. The other thing that's really important to have is a spray bottle of 99% IPA. The, the higher quality, the better. And just a box of shop towels or something to disposable to use. I like these ones because I can mostly do it with one hand. And then I'll just spray a little bit on this guy. If I get like a spill, like right here, I can just kind of wipe it off. Or, you know, if I want to clean my tool down, I can just spray my tool, spray down the area, go through, wipe down my tool real quick, wipe down the area, throw this in the bin, and then I'm good to go. Now, far too often when I watch people 3D printing, they're doing it on like a wooden table or a countertop or something like that one. I really recommend getting yourself a soft silicone mat. I use this, it's a dog mat. Uh, it's got a lip in it and it's really easy to clean. Like if I get resin on it and make a mess, I just take my trusty spray bottle, my cloth right here, wipe it up real quick. It doesn't really pull onto the fiber so it's not gonna break it apart like some surfaces will. It cleans really easy. Yes, definitely one thing to get is a mat like this one. And then what I do is I just keep my printers on the mat Generally something either like this, or I put them you know, two, at a, two at a time side by side if you have room, or you can put the printer 
and the washing cure station. They're big enough that they fit really, really well. And like I said, they're pretty cheap. Amazon again, probably also AliExpress. Definitely a good product to keep your work area clean and safe. And a clean and safe work area makes for a better 3D printer and a better 3D printing experience. So now let's say I'm using my squeegee and I feel something hard, I run the vat clean, I squeegee again, and it's still there. At that point, I might start thinking, well, that could be damage to the release film. I don't want another print. If there's damage to the release film, it could rip and tear and I could ruin my printer. So there's a couple things you can do on that one. You could remove the release film. If you've got a mirror, you could put it over the mirror so you can see the bottom of it. I think putting resin over you and looking up is, is not a good idea. Uh, don't do that. Just hover it over a mirror. If you can see the bottom, great. Sometimes it's maybe your resin's too dark and you can't really tell. So on that, what I do is not that syringe, just too big. This one, a 60 mil syringe, just any one that's 60 mil that's got a flat bottom is gonna work great. You can operate them with one hand and you can use the squeegee here. Squeegee it out, um, you know, pull the, hold the syringe on the squeegee and just kind of suck like that. Squeegee out as much as you can until you can visually see it or squeegee it all out, you know, whatever, it's your choice. And then from there, you can see whether or not the vat is in good condition or the, sorry, the release film is in good condition and whether or not you feel you should replace it or you're good to go on another 3D print. Now with this thing right here, don't ever clean it. Uh, you'll see here it's got resin in it from you know a while back, and I just you know if I do this, make a big mess. Usually I just do this in, in a trash can, and I'll get most of it out. I'll get my little disposable thing here and just clean off the side, and then I just store it like this, just like that, where the sun can't get to it. I actually got this from uh, another printer about two years ago, and I've been using it constantly, and it still works great. And that's because I never clean it, especially with IPA, because that will damage the rubber inside. Now, once you get the resin mostly removed and you're getting to a point where you want to clean it up, let's say you're going to go from a dark resin to a clear resin, or you're just going to put it in storage, what you don't want to do is take this same type of paper towel and clear out inside the vat. It can scratch the vat and it's going to leave fluffies all over. I used to use these Kimtech ones all the time. I stopped using them for the same reason. They can scratch it and leave some fluffies. What I still use these for is if I get a little drip and I don't want to use a full new sheet, I'll just grab one of these little small ones, spray it with a little IPA right on it, and then wipe it down real quick. And that way I'm only you know, using a little bit of paper instead of a lot of paper towel. I also see people using these right here, non-disposable microfibers. Now it won't scratch anything and they don't really leave a lot of fluffs anywhere. They leave a little bit, but you, you definitely don't want to wash these in your washing machine and you don't want to wash these in your sink. So it's either you're throwing them away or you're going through a long process to wash them. Definitely not recommended either. Instead, what you want to use is something else. Now what I'm using are these sheets right here. They're called M wipes and they are disposable microfiber sheets. And they're pretty cheap, but to make them cheaper, what I do is I fold it in half, fold it in half again, fold it in half again, and fold it in half again. And then I cut these into a square of basically this size. Hope you're enjoying watching this YouTube video, but I've noticed that many of you haven't subscribed yet. Maybe now's the time to do that. This gives me um, a lot, a lot of little squares. That way I'm only using one little square at a time and it's not gonna scratch the release film. It's not gonna leave, it, leave any fluff and it's gonna use a tiny bit of paper for every single time you've got to clean out your vat. Now let's say the worst does happen and you damaged your LCD or it just burned out over time. If you don't know this, they get really, really hot and the UV light actually degrades the screens. So they don't have a super long life. The next thing that I see people do is they'll use electric tape to replace the gasket that used to go around the screen protector or the LCD. The reason why you don't want to use electric tape is because it's way too thick. Uh, it also shrinks if it gets in contact with the resin, especially if that resin gets hot and it's going to bubble up. You don't want to use this stuff. I've tried a couple things. I tried um, one thing that I see all over the internet is this stuff right here. Now this tape, even though it's clear, does stop UV light. It's very easy to use, but it's also really, really fragile. I like it, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is actually this stuff right here. Again, we'll put a link in the description. This is just called LCD tape. Now it has a con as well. It's pro is that it's very, very durable and it's incredibly thin. The con about it is when you go to remove it, you know, next time you have to replace your screen, it's a little bit hard to remove the, the, the kind of goo it leaves over. But if you lose, use a little bit of goof off, it comes right off and it's really, it's just, it's great. It's, I just cut it into the right uh, thickness or length and it comes in different thicknesses. Again, we'll put links in the description for everything. So just remember, you can use either one of these tapes. It doesn't matter which one. This is my preference, but choose whatever you want. As long as you don't use this one. If you use this tape, I'm gonna say that you're wrong and that you should lose access to your own 3D printer because it's electrical tape. It's not designed for this application. Please, please don't use it.
And the final and last tip is to get yourself some high quality USB keys. Now I know a lot of 3D printers come with wireless nowadays, but not all printers do. And your access point versus where your printer sits might not be in the best location to send files over wirelessly, so you're still using USB. Basically, just don't use the one that comes with a 3D printer. They're, very, they're generally very cheap and they're really prone to data degradation. And you definitely don't wanna have lots of failures because you have a bad USB key. Just get ones that's 16 gigabits or smaller, format it to FAT32, and it's gonna work great. And that about sums it up. Here you have access to all of my secrets on how to keep your resin 3D printer running great and beautiful for a very long time. And if you could, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really does help out a lot for me to continue making movies like this one for you. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day. Thank you.